This chapter is on pipe flow, and it helps to start with some definitions. Let's imagine a fluid going at speed v through a pipe. I measure the pressure at various points with these manometers, and the pressure difference across the manometer, delta p, is equal to rho, the density of the fluid, times g, the gravitational acceleration, times h, which is the height difference between the fluids. If I measure the pressure at point A, now that is measured without changing the speed of the fluid, then that pressure is called the static pressure. The static pressure is just the pressure that one measures at a point without changing the speed of the flow. At point B, I have brought the fluid to rest without loss of mechanical energy, and this measures the stagnation pressure, i.e. the pressure at a stagnation point. And if the flow velocity is non-zero, then B is a higher pressure than A. The difference between these two pressures is known as the dynamic pressure. This is a half rho v squared, and when divided by rho g, it's called the velocity head. The key point is that the static pressure is just the pressure, and the stagnation pressure is the pressure measured at a stagnation point. And now I will introduce a third definition. It's called the total pressure, and it's the stagnation pressure plus rho g h, where h is some height measured from a datum level in the opposite direction to gravity. Now note that the total pressure is not the pressure measured at a stagnation point. It is the stagnation pressure plus rho g h. The total pressure therefore contains rho g h, the gravitational potential energy per unit volume, rho v squared upon 2, which is the kinetic energy per unit volume, and pressure, which is the pressure potential energy per unit volume. And in a network of pipes, we find it useful to follow the total pressure because we're essentially following the total mechanical energy of the fluid at that point in the pipe. When divided by rho g, this is known as the head. So on the diagram below, I might define my zero for h to be this point here, so h is measured from that point. I might start with a head of 1.5 meters. As the fluid goes through the pipe, we will have an entry loss of total pressure. Then we will have a loss of total pressure within this pipe, known as a pipe loss. That's due to friction with the pipe walls. Then we will have a gain in the total pressure across the pump. Then here is a valve. We will have a loss of total pressure across the valve. This is an orifice that might be being used to measure the speed of the flow. There will be a drop in total pressure across the orifice. There will be another pipe loss. And then there will be an exit loss as the flow exits the pipe into another reservoir. And let's say that because of the pump, I've ended up with a higher head than I started with, i.e. a higher total pressure than I started with. And I might want to work out how much power I need to put into the pump in order for the total pressure to rise by the desired amount, taking into account all the losses in the network. And in the next few sections, we shall work out the size of the losses through various components in a pipe network.